Hello everyone, God bless you all. Thank you for joining me today. I'm here to share with you some biblical perspective uh, regarding some of the questions that many of you have been asking. Are we as Christians in the New Testament, the New Covenant, are we supposed to observe a particular day of the Sabbath? Do we keep the Sabbath? Do we keep the seventh day? Do we observe it the way that the Israelites did? Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter into that rest, as he has said. So I saw in my wrath they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundations of the earth. The Sabbath day was a day of complete rest. From your works, you, you couldn't do anything. You couldn't lift up a bucket of water. You couldn't do anything you can't buy food you you can't go and and get food you can't in short you can't do any physical work you know the sabbath that god gave to the israelites it was a shadow the bible says it was showing things that are to come it was showing the rest that was coming for us and the bible says here in the book of hebrews chapter 4 verse 3 it says we who have believed when we believe in jesus we enter into that eternal rest but the rest of the of the physical Sabbath that the Israelites were given, it was just a one day rest, and then they they have to continue with their works, and then again when the Sabbath comes, they would rest from their works. Again, they would have to continue with their work, but that was showing the the Sabbath that God had prepared for those who are going to come and accept the gift of salvation in Jesus. You know, we are resting from our works. And Jesus was saying, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The true rest is Jesus himself. In the New Testament, I'm going to read other verses that, are, that I'm going to consolidate with this. But you need to get a clear perspective, read the entire book. But you're going to find that the real rest is us resting in Jesus. It's not just in observing a particular day. That was just a shadow showing that those who are going to believe in, in Jesus, they are going to rest from their works. Because when we come to Jesus, we are no longer working for our salvation. You know, you know, like Jesus has paid the ultimate price. He has made the ultimate sacrifice. And when we come to him, we rest from our works. We are no longer just following ordinances that the Israelites were following when they were trying to get salvation. But now we have this eternal rest in Jesus, and which is the rest from the works of the flesh. Okay, we are not, we, we are no longer following the works of the flesh. We are no longer struggling like to earn our, our way into heaven. We are resting in Jesus. And because Jesus is holy, you know, Grace does not make us sin, so that's another topic. But because Jesus is holy, He, when we rest in Him, He makes us to bear good fruit. That doesn't mean that we now go on and He makes us free to sin. No, that's not the freedom that is in Jesus. It's freedom from trying to earn our way from into salvation by simply obeying ordinances of touch not this, you know, like don't don't anyone who touches this is unclean. You know, all those ordinances about what is unclean, what is clean, they were all just a shadow of what is to come. They were not good enough. They could not make us clean enough. Okay, that rest of just one day was not good enough. Now we have been granted an eternal rest in Jesus. Colossians chapter 2 verse 16 Therefore, let no one judge you in food or in drink 
or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is Christ. All these things, the whole Old Testament was showing Jesus. It was pointing to Jesus. There were shadows that were showing what is to come. And Jesus was made manifest in flesh. You know, he came, he died for us, and he rose again. And that is the substance that all these things were pointing to. You know, there was a physical rest, but that rest is not found in Jesus. It's no, no longer necessarily just observing a particular day. Romans chapter 14, it says, from verse 1, it says, Receive one who is weak in faith, but not to dispute over doubtful things. For one believes that he may eat all things. And by the way, as I'm talking about the Sabbath, I'm also talking about the laws that the Israelites were given, such as what you can eat, what you cannot eat. You know, the, the Israelites were given specific things. They couldn't eat things like pork. For example, it was considered unclean. There were some things that the Israelites could eat and could not eat. But is that required of us? We cannot just get the New Testament part of the Bible, right? And say, we're just going to read this. But we have, we have to read both, you know, because one, firstly, the Old Testament is teaching us a lot of things. But all those things are pointing to Jesus, okay? And we have to hear... Now that Jesus has been made manifest, we have to hear what God has to say about that because there were a lot of ordinances that the Israelites were given. But in the new covenant, when the, when the old covenant, when the law was fulfilled in Jesus, God gives clarifications on what these things really meant and how he wants us to, co to continue obeying him. So we need to read the Old Testament in light of the new. We need to read it in the revelation of the new. You know, because Jesus has been made manifest and the law has been fulfilled. Not to say that now we are free to see, no, but God has given us a deeper understanding of what those things were truly supposed to mean and the things that are required of us. You know, the main thing, what is it that God really wants of us? Is it simply to keep the Passover? Is it simply to observe, you know, the Feast of the Tabernacles? Is it simply to eat this and not to eat that? You know, and the Bible says the substance is Jesus. The main thing, all those things were pointing to Jesus, you know. They were not enough to make us clean. Staying away from unclean foods, it wasn't enough to make us clean. Observing all those things, you know, where when a, when a woman is on her period, she couldn't do things like, of course, there's some things that even, even, your, even your own nature would tell you, even your own nature would tell you to say, you know, for example, you cannot be intimate and all that, but... What I'm trying to say is those things were by like, oh, where a woman sits, it's unclean. Where, what a woman touches is unclean and all those things. You know, the Bible gives clarity on all that. Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to dispute over doubtful things. Okay, for example, for example, when a woman was on her period, she couldn't come into the presence of the Lord under the old covenant but the bible does not does not does not forbid a woman to come into the presence of the lord because of any physical circumstance that she may be in under the new covenant the bible doesn't say that she cannot come and pray you can pray you can even fast you can still seek god you know all those things had a meaning. The blood of Jesus has made us clean. And all he wants of us is to continue obeying him. And he wants to reveal himself to us. And we can only know him when we seek him. And when we seek him and when, when we get baptized by the Holy Spirit, then we are going to know 
what is it really that God requires of us? So it is all those things. What I'm saying is if you decide to say, I'm going to do this, you know, like all, all those, I'm going to, to observe the Sabbath. It isn't a sin for you to do that. It isn't a sin, but it is not a requirement that God is asking of you. You are just giving yourself an extra burden. You know, you are in you are putting yourself in that bondage that Christ came to set you free from. He came to set you free from that bondage of all of having to observe all those ordinances just in an effort to get right with God. Romans chapter 14 from verse 1 it says, Receive one who is weak in the faith but not to disputes over doubtful things. For one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat, and let not him who does not eat judge him who eats. For one person esteems one day above another, another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. The Bible is saying, if you feel you want to honor a particular day, that's up to you. If you feel all days are alike because we serve God every day, that is okay. That's up to you. Whatever you do, do it to honor God. But you who feels like you need to honor a particular day, don't, don't judge and condemn the other person who says, they don't feel the need to honor a particular day. That's what the Bible says. You who feels like I cannot, I cannot eat these things. I only need to eat these particular things. Don't judge the one who feels they are free to eat anything because the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking. God is not concerned about what type of food are you eating? Is it under the things that are considered clean or unclean when it comes to alcohol that's a whole different topic because the bible addresses it deeply and that's a whole different topic but the kingdom of god is about jesus it's about fellowship with god and living in obedience to the word of god it's about living in obedience to jesus what the lord is telling us is your food doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you feel and eat pork, eat. If you feel I can't eat pork, don't eat. God is not concerned about the food you are eating. The only law that God gave concerning food in the New Testament was to abstain from food sacrificed to idols and from strangled food. But when it comes to a particular type of food, as in what is clean, what is not clean, God has said, give thanks and eat with a clean conscience. And if you feel you don't want to eat it, don't eat it. You know, it's one thing for the food to be healthy. When we say, because uh, I got some questions as well in my inbox saying, can we eat GMO foods and all that? Yes, you can. You just give thanks to the Lord. Eat it with a clean heart. You are not sinning against God by what you are eating. Even Jesus said, it is what comes out, what your actions and your words. That is what is sin. Let's just read this verse. Matthew chapter 15 from verse 11, it says, Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of his mouth. This is what defiles a man. If you go down to verse 17, it says, Do you not understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but not to eat with unwashed hands, 
you know, like eating with unwashed hands was one of the Old Testament ordinances that the Israelites had to observe. And when they noticed that Jesus and his disciples were not observing that, they were condemning them. And Jesus was putting them in the right perspective to say, it isn't about food. Food isn't what defiles you. How you eat your food isn't what defiles you. What comes out of your mouth, those things you do, things that come from your heart, your actions, those defile you. When you commit adultery, that is from within, you first, you, you first conceive it in your heart and then you go ahead and commit it. That is a sin. Because it's coming out of your out of your heart, you know, it goes to show what kind of person you really are. It goes to show that deep down your heart, you have rejected Jesus. And that is the reason why you are still comfortable in adultery. And that is the reason why you are still comfortable with with dressing lustfully. With dressing in a way that will draw sexual attention to you. And that is the reason why you are still comfortable with lying and swearing and cursing. So all those things come from the heart, not the food that you eat. The food that you eat, the Bible says that it's up to you. This is the freedom that is in Jesus. We cannot abuse this freedom to say, um, then this goes to show that we can dress however we like, because that is how people like to misinterpret it. Because... Really, if Jesus is the substance that was being revealed, how can I claim that now I have entered his rest and I'm, and, and I'm in Jesus, but I'm not honoring him? I'm dressing in a way that is in order to draw sexual attention to me. That is different. I'm causing people to lust. And yet Jesus had said, if, if you look at a woman lustfully, you have already committed adultery with her. So there needs to be a very clear balance in the word of God. You need to read the word of God with the understanding of the Holy Spirit. First Timothy chapter four from verse one to five, it says, now the spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God has created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and by prayer the bible says the teachings that forbid people to eat certain things you cannot eat this you cannot eat that the bible calls it the teaching of demons it, the bible calls it to be a result of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons because if you want to eat something eat if you don't want to eat something don't eat it that's not what God is concerned about. That's not what Christianity is all about. It's about Jesus. It's about the rebirth. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourself to regulations? Do not touch, do not test, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using, according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. The Bible says all these self-imposed regulations, you know, God has given you the freedom. He says, if you want to eat, don't eat. If you don't want, don't. You know, but the Bible says all these self-imposed regulations that you want to put on yourself from the flesh it looks as though it's a very spiritual thing it looks as though it's a wise thing for you 
to believe that as, as a teaching of God. That's what the Bible says. But it says it has no value in killing the desires of the flesh. Because like Jesus said, the desires of the flesh are from within. It's not in what you're eating. It's what is conceived in the heart that is going to result in something that you're going to do. And the Bible is warning us and the Lord is saying, don't judge anyone by their food or by their drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. He says all these things were just a shadow. They were all just pointing to Jesus. So you're living the real thing. You're, you're living the main point God wanted you to realize by, by giving you all those laws in the Old Testament. God was trying to, to reveal Jesus to those people. And he's saying, now that Jesus has been revealed, if you keep wanting to hold on to those things, those things that were just shadows, you're missing the whole point. The, everything that God is going to tell you is not going to go against what the Bible has said. If you feel like, I don't want to eat this, God has no problem with you not eating something. Okay, but the Bible says, don't go and judge the one who, who feels they can eat anything because their conscience is clear to eat. Don't go and judge the one who is eating. The kingdom of God is not about food and drink. So the substance is Jesus. It's not about food and drink. It's about Jesus and everything that God has required of us is all written down again in the New Testament. He has renewed that covenant with us. It's no longer in just observing uh, ordinances, keeping specific days and everything. If you want to do that, that is okay. That is a, a burden or a choice that you, you want to do on your own. But for the sake of answering this question, it is not a biblical requirement according to the Bible. It is not a, a biblical requirement from the Lord. You are not sinning against the Lord when you're doing all these things because the Bible has clearly taught us what we can and cannot do. So we need to ensure that we don't get distracted. Another question I've been receiving a lot is, can I wear mixed fabrics? Do I have to wear 100% cotton? Um, again, that comes down to the ordinances. All those ordinances were fulfilled, you know, that's why it's, it's really important and I'm asking you to read all the letters of Paul. When you read them, you're going to know how are you supposed to obey God in the revelation of the Lord Jesus? How are you supposed to obey him? What is really required? You need to read the Bible for yourself and God is going to reveal his truth to you. Read the letters of Paul. So, in terms of, you, yeah, you cannot mix this fabric and this fabric. In the New Testament, God's concern has been, are you dressing in a way that brings sexual immorality, that promotes lust, you know? Because your body is the temple of, this, of the Holy Spirit. Are you dressing in a way that reflects Christ? That is the major question. It's not about what material is your top made of. Is it made of nylon? Is it made of cotton? Is it made of any other material? It's about the design, how something is designed, okay? Like the design of something, regardless of what material is, it's made of. If it's designed to, to expose your cleavage, then it is a sin, regardless of what material is. If it's designed... To like, like, like in a way that is too tight for you, it's exposing your the shape of your body immodestly. That is a sin. If it's designed in a way whereby it's transparent, it's showing your body, causing people to lust after you, that is a sin. If it's designed to be a short skirt, that is a sin. It's not about the material, it's about the nature of the clothing, if you know what I mean. The nature is it, is it, is it lustful? 
not what material is it made of is it made of cotton you need to wear cotton no that is not a requirement from the lord if you want if you want to wear cotton if you've got your other reasons that's okay but i want you to know that this is not a requirement from the lord in the new covenant he is concerned about are you dressing modestly are you dressing in a way that is promoting lust or not and you know uh, when it comes to dressing the bible is very specific on that i've also got an equation can i wear flowers can i wear prints can i can my clothes have prints can my clothes have patterns uh, can my clothes have pockets can my clothes have zips all these things that's what i'm talking about is the design of something is it promoting lust regardless of whether or of whether it has a pattern if you if 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 you wear something and then it causes you to sin against the lord then get rid of it okay that's the easiest way i can say it if a particular if when you wear a particular dress if for example if it brings you pride get rid of it if you wear something and it causes you to sin against the lord get rid of it otherwise like generally speaking you can wear clothes with flowers you can wear clothes with 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 uh, different prints on them and everything different patterns and everything but the bottom line is is it promoting lust it's a different issue if it's bringing you pride because the bible says if your eye causes you to sin cut it off you know so if it if it's causing you to sin remove it cut it off but generally speaking it's it's more about whether it's going to expose your body and whether it's going to cause the opposite sex to last after you and some people have been asking me can i do i have to use soap that that has got chemicals in it do i need to use soap that 100% uh only pure natural products again that's not what god is concerned about god is concerned about is that soap is that lotion going to bleach your skin it's about the result that it's going to achieve on you okay it does, if it's going to just soften your skin moisturize your skin leave you like that there is nothing wrong with it there's nothing wrong with it there's nothing wrong with, with a soap that's just going to moisturize your skin. There's nothing wrong with uh, 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 with, with a lotion that's just going to moisturize your skin, your skin. But the Lord is against the soaps and the lotions that are going to bleach your skin. And there is nothing wrong with a hair product that's just going to make your hair uh that that's just going to to make your hair soft and manageable without changing its natural look there's nothing wrong with that regardless of whether it's made of 100% natural products or regardless of whether it's made of chemicals it's about the result the result that something is going to achieve that's the thing god is more concerned about is it going to change you into something fake regardless of whether it's made of pure oils regardless of whether it's made of pure natural products it's one thing to say these things are healthy it's another thing to say these things are sinful so those are two different things and i i don't want to confuse them but i want to to answer them in a way that you really understand so it's about what is it going to achieve okay is it going to is it going to draw and is it going to draw unnecessary attention to you is it going to cause you pride that's a different issue but it's not about is it made of cotton is it made of polyester is it made of nylon you know it's not about that it's about what is it achieving is it causing people to lust after you is it is it bleaching your skin is it turning you into something fake is it straighten in your hair when your hair when your hair is curly when it comes to clothes now but the material it's about what is the design is this design glorifying jesus is this design uh promoting lust when people look at after when people look at me will men lust after me because of how i'm dressed okay will, will this glorify jesus 
So God is calling us to a place of deep intimacy with him. We need to seek him while he can still be found. And it's very, very important to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's very important. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice and they will not listen to the voice of a stranger. So God wants us to know him in a way whereby he wants to be the one to, to, to shepherd us. He wants to be the one to teach us all these things, like all the things that I know about the Lord, like the majority of the things that I know about the Lord, he has taught me personally as I've been spending time with him. He has taught me his word. He has taught me a lot of things. And this is through reading the Bible and spending time with him. So we need to focus on Jesus. We don't need to get distracted. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. 